Hi everyone, this is Michael from Blue Sky Bio. In today's tutorial video, we will demonstrate a super simple process flow for crown down implant planning. After we create the surgical guide, we will create the crown for titanium base immediately afterwards. And what's fantastic is that everything, of course, is directly in the Blue Sky Plan version that you already have. And the generation and design and the export of the crown is completely free. It could then be milled or printed. We're going to start the process flow by clicking on Implant and Surgical Guides. Before I jump in, let me just demonstrate I'm um, on version 4.11.2 of the Blue Sky Plan software. If you have anything older, then you should definitely go to our website and download, or you could go to Help and check for updates. Okay, we're going to start the process flow by clicking Implant Planning and Surgical Guides and then selecting the wizard for the one or two implant case. Now, this tutorial video isn't going to go into detail about using wizard. We have other tutorial videos on that topic. But as we go through it, I will describe what I'm doing, and then we will create the crown for the case as well. So the import type should be model STL for one implant case. And of course, we recommend the use of the Blue Sky Bio Fully Guided Surgical Kit. Uh, we do have more than 70 different implant systems in Blue Sky Plan, so for whatever reason you are using a different implant system, then select the relevant surgical kit for the implant system that you are using. Once you've done that, then go ahead and click on OK. We're going to select the CT scan. With Blue Sky Plan, you could load compressed icons, uncompressed icons, zipped, unzipped. We have all the different options, so select the relevant folder or the relevant file. You could use the shortcuts going across the top of the screen to navigate to the relevant location on your computer, select the relevant file or folder, and then go ahead and click on OK. We will now define the relevant field of view. You could do this simply by grabbing and dragging with your left mouse button the yellow frames to identify the relevant field of view. You could do this in any of the views. And you can also use the blue circle widget if the patient wasn't looking directly straight or directly to the side, then you could update the positioning as needed. Once you've done that, then go ahead and click on OK. The software will load the CT scan, and while it is doing that, it is also automatically detecting the nerves. So we see on screen that the CT scan is now visible, and the nerves have been completely automatically detected. You could use the slider on the bottom, and slide left to right to adjust the visibility of the CT scan on the screen. Once you've done that and you've identified and confirmed accurate nerve placement, simply click on Next. The software now prompts us to load the relevant model scan or STL file. Simply left click once on the relevant file. You could see a preview on the right side of the screen. You could grab and drag with your left mouse button and then go ahead and click on OK. Let's indicate mandible, and now the software is running completely automatic model alignment, so it's aligning the model to the CT scan. We can now confirm the alignment in our 3D view and in our 2D views. We can take a look at those yellow outlines of the model and confirm that they're tightly wrapped around the CT scan in all the different views, and then go ahead and click on Next. Once this is done, we're going to select the relevant crown, the general size, small, medium, or large, and the relevant implant and abutment. Now, of course, we'll be able to resize the crown later on as needed. We could also swap out the implant and or abutment for a different size. We'll have all of those options. I'm going to click on implant, select the relevant implant, and switch over to abutment, select abutment, select the relevant abutment, and then go ahead and click on OK, and then OK again. We are now going to left click once in the general vicinity of where the crown and the implant should be placed. The software is now running automatic implant placement, and the software has aligned the crown with the implant and of course the abutment to the correct positioning. We're now going to click on Next. We'll be able to confirm the positioning. If we want to make any modifications to the placement, we could simply grab, grab and drag the implants and abutment to move that around. And if you want to modify the alignment, simply grab and drag the circular widget to adjust the angulation accordingly. If you would like to select a different implant and or abutment, simply right click and choose replace. 
we're now once again returned to the implants and the button selection screen and you could select the relevant parts and then click OK. Once that is done, simply click on Next. We can now see the model with the software guide tube, which is the brown circle that we have here, which of course represents the exact positioning of the hole in the surgical guide. I'm now drawing that line of the surgical guide. I'm drawing the surgical guide curve simply by holding down the shift key and left clicking with my mouse button as I define the relevant area. And we're gonna go all the way around back to the start position and it closes automatically or you could simply grab and drag the green dot into the red dot that was there to close the curve. Once that is done, let's click on next. Okay, the software is fabricating the surgical guide. It appears on screen. Of course, we could see how the hole for the surgical guide is in the exact positioning of that software guide tube and the vertical axis of the implant goes directly through the middle of those holes. Once that is done, we go ahead and click on Next. And now we are going to create a folder to save the relevant data. So let's go to Desktop by clicking on Desktop. And I'm going to click New Folder. And I'll call this Crown Down Demo. And then click OK. The software is now saving the project file, the Blue Sky Plan project file as well as the surgical guide to the relevant folder. Would you like to complete the case approval form before sending? We're not sending this case anywhere. We don't need to confirm the planning for the purpose of the tutorial video. Now I'll just go ahead and click on no. Okay, so now we have completed the wizard process flow. We've loaded the data, of course. We've placed the implant and created our surgical guide. We're going to click close the wizard. And now we're going to create the crown for the titanium base for an immediate load case. So let's go ahead and switch over to Crown and Bridge. And we have our relevant surfaces here on the screen. We could toggle off the visibility of the surgical guide. We have our implant and our abutment visible. And we could toggle on the visibility of the crown. What we could do now is open the teeth editing panel what I suggest doing is right-clicking on the model, toggle transparency. Now we have full visibility, including the widget, including the abutment, and we could fine-tune the design of our crown. So we could use the circles here to grab and to drag and to enlarge, enlarge the crown. We could use the arrows to move the crown accordingly. Grab the widget and rotate as needed. And once we finished positioning and resizing the crown, we could use our editing tools that we have here to smooth or global geometry reform if we want to close our gaps here. Okay, we could use the Add Remove tool simply by holding down the Shift key and your left mouse button to add material or Control and left mouse button to remo remove material. We could change the tool size and the tool strength using the sliders. And we could also use Local Geometry Transform as well to just grab a section of the crown and drag and stretch it accordingly. Once we are done with our crown design, we could go ahead and click on Restoration Design, and we're going to turn our crown into a crown for a titanium base abutment. So we're going to confirm the selection of crown on a tie base, select the draw type to be mandible, confirm the different settings here that we have. The model is our yellow model, the crown is our crown, the tie base, and the antagonist if we have one. Now going to click on Start. We are going to confirm the path of insertion. 
we could either use the arrow on screen or align the model on screen accordingly and then select set in search and direction from view. Once we are happy with our path of insertion, we're going to click on next. Define a proximal area. So simply what I like doing is since we've already sized and designed the crown, I'm going to click the checkbox, do not modify crown shape or placement. This way, first of all, we don't need to define the proximal areas, but this way the software won't try to resize or modify the crown. If we do not check, then we could just hold down the shift key and select with our left mouse button the proximal areas. And again, I recommend for simplicity's sake, just check the checkbox, do not modify crown shape or placement, and then we don't even need to uh, define the proximal areas. And I'm going to go ahead and click on next. Now the software throws a margin into place. We could improve the placement simply by clicking project margin, which means that we're going to project the margin from the crown that we designed directly downwards and the software adjusts that accordingly. We could further improve this if we like simply by holding down the shift key and grab and drag with your left mouse button and just redraw the part of the curve that you want to redraw. Okay, once that is done, click Next. And here we could see that a connection has been created between the crown and the titanium base. At this step, we're able to adjust that. We could simply grab any of those nodes and grab and drag them. We could also use our slider for the crown margin and we could see how that adjusts the crown margin accordingly. We also have other sliders visible here on screen. The titanium base margin is the slider for the connection between the crown and the titanium base margin. We have the minimal thickness of the crown, which the software will ensure that that doesn't get violated. There will be at least a half a millimeter of minimal thickness, and we could just add accordingly if we like. And we have the crown cement spacer, which is the space for the adhesive between the titanium base and the crown. We have the checkbox here to create crown screw channel, so that could be toggled on and off accordingly, and then simply click on next. The software now has created the crown, and we have a final editing step that we could use to once again add or remove material, to smooth, or to local deform. And once that is done, we could simply click on next. We can now see our designed crown. And this could be exported for printing or for milling simply by going to File, Export Data. and then selecting the relevant settings for export quality of standard high or very high of the crown, especially if it's going to be printed. And then we could, of course, export the crown itself. If we would like to export the file for the CAM mill, then this should be selected as well. And then we could click Export. We can now save the crown that we have just created to the same folder that we created earlier, our crown down demo, and then click OK. You can now see in the folder that we have the Blue Sky Plan file itself. In addition, we have the surgical guide file, and in addition, we have we have our designed crown.